As I had mentioned previously, today's video is going to be my online Disney pin buying guide. Since there are many, many people like myself who don't live near the parks and don't have direct access to buying pins, most of us turn to find Disney pins online. But finding where to get these pins online and figuring out which sellers are safe can be a little bit of a tricky process. So I'll say buckle up, this video could get a little bit long, but I'm going to do my best to give a kind of comprehensive guide to having a safe buying experience online when looking for Disney pins. As always, the rule goes, the only way to absolutely 100% know that your pin is authentic is to buy it direct from Disney. And Disney now has been making it a little bit easier for people to buy Disney pins online. There's the Shop Disney website, which has a number of the Disney Parks pins there, and then there's also the Shop Disney Parks app. Both of these online locations generally have a decent amount of open edition or rack pins available. Sometimes they'll have some mystery pouches or mystery boxes. The Shop Disney Parks app typically has a wider selection of pins, but I've been seeing over time more and more of their pins have been going in store only. But if you're looking for some current rack pins, a good number of them you can find direct from Disney and buy online. As well, on occasion, Shop Disney has limited edition pin sets, and those are online exclusive. Recently, they've been releasing this surprise series of stunning silhouettes pins, which are only an LE of 300. So on occasion, you can buy some pretty cool rare pins direct from Disney. And so if you're just starting out and kind of super freaked out about making sure you get real pins, you can buy online direct from Disney. However, with the pins that Disney has available, you can almost always find those pins for cheaper elsewhere online. So I myself very rarely purchase pins online direct from Disney unless it is something like a special exclusive limited edition pin release. So when you move beyond the world of Disney online, there's a few things to keep in mind. As I had recommended in my How to Disney Pin Trade Online video, I would suggest joining on Facebook a pin reference group and there's two which I've linked in the description. These groups provide reference checks on any seller or trader or buyer. And so in this case, if you find a seller and want to know if they are legitimate, trustworthy or not, you can submit that name to these reference groups and they'll create a post where people who have bought from this person can post their experiences and what it was like. And so that way you can get a check on that seller if you're a little bit uncertain of them. The next thing that I had also mentioned in my pin trading online video is how to stay safe when actually buying. So whenever you're gonna be buying Disney pins online, that's something other than a direct from Disney type thing, you always need to pay with PayPal. You do not want to pay with anything else such as Venmo because PayPal provides a buyer's protection. The only way you ever want to pay on PayPal is with goods and services. Goods and services takes out a very small percentage fee for the seller and that way it provides a buyer's protection and also a bit of a seller protection. So that way you can file a claim with PayPal if anything does go awry. The other option on PayPal is as friends and family. And as that would suggest, that is designed if you're sending money to your friends and family. That is not to be used for any transaction. When you're buying online, especially on the social media platforms, you may come across prices listed as friends and family. If for any item that I am actually buying, I will never, ever, ever pay as friends and family. Many people starting out make the mistake of paying as friends and family and then can just totally lose out on their money because they do not have any buyer's protection. So always and only pay as PayPal goods and services. And the next general point to note is to not freak out too much. There seems to be this sweet spot of people who are relatively new to pin collecting but have just learned about fake pins where there is a certain level of paranoia. I've seen countless posts on pin groups online where somebody will post a picture of a pin saying, I think I got a fake pin, and that pin itself, it will be a brand new release from the parks, the pin will look absolutely gorgeous, nothing at all that would indicate a fake but people are just so worried that they could end up with a fake pin that they convince themselves that anything and everything could be fake. I've also seen people post pins that they themselves bought direct from the Disney parks. And again, like I said, if you're buying direct from Disney, that is the one way to absolutely be totally sure that it is an authentic pin. It also goes along with this that Disney's quality control on their pins has been getting pretty darn bad. Nowadays, there are a lot of pins direct from Disney, brand new and authentic, that have a lot of the qualities that scrapper pins have, such as very scratchy enamel, 
pretty severe paint dips in the enamel, slightly rough edges, and I understand a lot of that paranoia comes from where people see this pin that isn't 100% perfect and they think it's a scrapper or a fake, when in fact Disney's quality just really isn't super great now. So do be sure to educate yourself. I have a number of videos on this channel and there are other videos online that talk a little bit more in depth about fake and scrapper pins. So you want to be able to educate yourself but you don't want to exist in the level of paranoia where you think everything you come across might be fake. Now getting into some other online buying platforms, the first two to go through are very easy. Just do not buy anything from Amazon or Etsy. I'm sure Amazon might have a few legitimate third-party sellers, but in general, Amazon is a home for fake pins and fake pin lots, and Etsy is also home to just these junk pin lots. So when you're looking to buy pins, I wouldn't even suggest looking at these websites. However, I'll say with Etsy, there are quite a lot of fantasy pins or fan-made Disney-inspired pins there that you can find. So I personally never make any pin purchases from Amazon or Etsy. Where I do make a lot of my pin purchases is on Facebook. Facebook, there are a number of really awesome pin trading and selling groups, and these groups are moderated, and these moderators are pretty good in very clearly spotting out if somebody is trying to sell fake pins or they'll be able to step in if there is a problem. And on Facebook is where a lot of the very well-known and highly trusted pin traders sell their pins. I'm gonna link to two of my favorite Disney pin groups for buying and also trading pins in, in the description. And then I'm also going to link to the Facebook group Disney Pin Auctions. Disney Pin Auctions runs auctions, obviously, like you would find on eBay, but these pins are all through a more screened or filtered environment thanks to the moderators of this group. Other great places to find pins on Facebook is through the page Discount Disney Pin Trading. Discount Disney Pin Trading is run by Jenny, who is also the official pin seller of the Disney Kitty Pin Trade Group. If you're looking for any open edition or mystery pins, you will find them from Jenny for an absolute amazing price. They're going to be far, far less than what you would pay if you bought them from the Shop Disney Parks app or the Shop Disney website but they are all authentic and brand new. There's also two Facebook groups that do live pin sales that also have really great prices. The first is Desperate for Disney's Pin Sales, and the second is Pinderella Shop. Those as well I'm linking in the description, and they're both a safe and kind of fun way to get your pins since they're live sales. You have to be one of the first to comment sold on that item, so make sure you have your refreshing fingers ready. In addition to Facebook, there is also quite a lot of pin sellers on Instagram, and it's pretty easy to find the Disney pin community there. Just search for hashtags related to Disney pins or Disney pin trading, and then oftentimes your explore page will be populated with new people. However, Instagram doesn't have the same security as as a Facebook group would that would have moderators who can step in. But Instagram, I found, is a good place if you're looking for pin pickups. Allison's Pins on Instagram does at-cost pickups for Walt Disney World pins and other items, and there's also a large number of really nice ladies in Hong Kong who do pickups from there as well. So I make a good chunk of my pin purchases on Facebook with a much smaller amount than I make through Instagram, but I also do a lot of pin purchases through eBay. And eBay, it seems, is kind of where people really freak out in terms of pins because there are so many really awesome, great sellers on eBay, but there are also a lot of really awful counterfeit sellers. eBay unfortunately seems to do absolutely nothing about these counterfeit sellers. Earlier on, I would try to report listings for counterfeit pins, but that pretty much does nothing, and it's kind of the inevitable fact that eBay is where a lot of fake pins live. Now, while eBay can feel quite daunting at first, over time it actually can get pretty easy to spot and stay away from the unsafe sellers. I want to say a disclaimer now that when I talk about counterfeit sellers on eBay, everything is my opinion. I've seen people who have put lists together of well-acknowledged counterfeit and scrapper sellers get threatened with legal action for putting their name on that list, which is quite rich because those sellers are doing illegal activity. So everything that I say about counterfeit sellers is purely my opinion, purely opinion, and take my opinion for what it is knowing my level of knowledge. The rule number one for when trying to stay safe when buying on eBay is to avoid all sellers who have 
bulk pin lot of pins for less than a dollar a piece. The eBay, Amazon, and Etsy bulk fake pin lots all come in these very, very thin little plastic baggies with a red line on top. The sellers get the pins in these little baggies just like this direct from the counterfeit factories in China and are sold as is. So these very little thin plastic baggies with the red line on top really are the hallmark of these fake bulk pin lots. If you see sellers with bulk amounts of these, stay away. So if you look at the feedback for those sellers with those very, very obvious fake bulk pin lots, you'll notice their feedback scores are actually very high. And that's often a problem when people are trying to scope out what sellers are safe or not, is that even the most blatant counterfeit sellers can have feedback scores that are close to 100%. And that's why I mentioned at the beginning, it's best to join one of the Facebook pin reference groups so you can get feedback from more experienced pin buyers. You'll often see feedback scores are so high simply because people just do not know. You may also see feedback like some of the pins in my pin lot were fake, but most of them were real. But if you're buying pin lots for under a dollar per pin that are coming in those little baggies, that's basically the one way to guarantee every single pin is going to be fake. Kind of like the opposite of the rule of where if you buy from Disney, you have a guaranteed authentic pin. If you buy one of those bulk pin lots for less than a dollar per pin that come in those little plastic baggies, that's one way to guarantee 100% fake pins. Now the problem is it's not just those very easily identifiable bulk pin lots. Nearly every single type of Disney pin has been faked or scrapped. That doesn't mean that every single pin itself has, but every type of pin you can imagine. Hidden Mickeys, Open Edition, Limited Edition, Pin on Pins, Walt Disney Imagineering, Disney Studio Store Hollywood. So in essence, there's no one type of pin that is safe. Generally, the more complex the pin it is, meaning how many detailed elements it has, that does make it safer. But even pins with pin on pin elements and stained glass details can get faked. So a good thing you can do is to educate yourself on what pins are faked. On eBay, off the top of my head, I can think of at least five major direct Hong Kong counterfeit and scrapper sellers whose listings are very, very easy to distinguish. As a general eBay rule, the only safe sellers from Hong Kong or China are those who are actually selling Hong Kong Disneyland or Shanghai Disneyland or even Tokyo Disneyland merchandise. For base examples, the eBay seller Best Pin Store and also SHDR store. They are sellers from Hong Kong and China that sell authentic new pins from their respective parks. When you see pins that are listed as shipping from Hong Kong with 50 cent shipping, and you see listing after listing after listing after listing of that same pin with that same stock photo, you found a direct counterfeit and scrapper seller. So scroll through their listings of pins, because any pin that you see there is one that has fakes and scrappers out. You'll notice in some of these direct counterfeit listings that the pins do come on actual backer cards. And you'll find this from the US counterfeit sellers as well, that there are some pins that come what appear to be on original backer cards in original packaging. In particular, there are a number of counterfeited booster sets. A lot of these happen to be booster sets from Disneyland Paris, so I don't really know why some of those molds got copied and stolen, but they'll kind of appear like they're coming in actual sealed packaging when all of it is actually fake. So know that just having a backer card does not make a pin safe. When looking through items, you wanna make sure you read the description carefully. Many counterfeit sellers will market their pins as tradable, or that they had gotten them by trading with Disney cast members. However, tradable is almost always code for fake. They market these pins as tradable because technically they are tradable by loophole. Disney's one main requirement for a pin to be considered tradable is that it has copyright Disney on the back, and obviously all counterfeit pins will have copyright Disney on the back since they're made from copied and stolen molds. So if you ever see the word tradable used in the description, that is a sign for you to avoid that seller. Also be wary of any time things are listed or described as they got it from trading with a cast member because at least 95% of the pins on cast member lanyards and pin boards are fake. So maybe unless it was a brand new released hidden Mickey that you can only get through trading with cast members, saying that it was received through trading with cast members is not the best sign. What you want to look for are items that are described as 100% guaranteed authentic. Some counterfeit sellers will also put in their description that the pins all come with a black rubber Mickey pin backs because they kind of put that in as a phrase to make people feel like it's real, but the pin back has absolutely nothing to do with whether a pin or not is real. Anybody can just buy those little rubber Mickey pin backs and from at least the 
the bulk lot fake pins I've come across, even those Mickey pin backs are different from any other ones I've gotten on authentic pins. So with eBay, really it's about familiarizing yourself with the sellers and knowing the things to look out for. I do want to give a few examples of guaranteed, absolute safe, 100% authentic sellers on eBay that can be used both as buying options and also as examples of what to look for in terms of a good seller. The first is Busy B1. That seller has a lot of rack pins and mystery boxes and bags, and they also offer the only safe type of eBay grab bag. So they have grab bags that are composed of sealed mystery pouches, because something like an actual sealed mystery pack, mystery box, there are no counterfeit versions that I've ever seen of fully sealed mystery pouches or mystery boxes. So buying those are your safe way of getting eBay grab bags. Next example of a safe seller is Killjoy667. They have a wide range of pins available. The seller is very well known in the pin trading community. Then there is Dream499, longtime pin trader and collector. You'll find some older or harder to find pins there. And then finally, My D Pins, which also has a physical store located out in Anaheim. They have a wide range of pins available from lower end to higher end. And they also offer local pickup if you are in the Anaheim area. And so there are so, 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 so many more really awesome safe sellers on eBay. And it's kind of impossible to go through every single one. But I at least wanted to give a few names and examples of secure sellers who 100% guarantee their pins are authentic. You can also find a few independent websites that sell Disney pins that are in their own store format. You should hopefully know Ryan from Disney Pins Blog. On the Disney Pins Blog website, they have an online store where you can buy a number of pins there. There's also the website Wonderland Pin Trading that has an extensive inventory I've purchased from before. And then Elizabeth from Everything Mousy Pins also has a website. I've never purchased from there before, but it is a place that 100% guarantees authentic pins. If you like a mystery aspect to buying pins online, you could also consider a Disney pin subscription service. In the past, I used Theme Park Monthly and I was always very happy with the pins that I got. All those pins are brand new and direct from the parks. Magic at Your Door also offers a pin subscription that's pretty popular. Again, new authentic pins from the park. I will say I cannot recommend Mickey Monthly as a pin subscription for their lowest level of pin subscription, which I think is the Pin Pal. They only send out fake pins and the ones that you find in those cheap fake eBay pin lots. They've been confronted about this for well over a year. Most of the people I know who have complained have gotten fake pins as replacement for their fake pins, but if you look on their website, you'll see that that subscription is listed as tradable pins. And again, like I said, tradable almost always is used as code for fake. If you look at Mickey Monthly's higher level pin subscriptions, those pins are described as being authentic. But as last I've heard, they have not stopped sending out those fake pins. And even though they do offer some authentic pin subscriptions, I would not choose to support a company who is kind of trying to dupe the inexperienced pin trader. As a final little note about buying pins online, I wanted to touch on Disney Studio Store Hollywood and Walt Disney Imagineering pins online because under certain circumstances, you can buy them direct online. The Disney Studio Store Hollywood every few months does an online pin release. As of late, most of these releases have been surprise releases, so they are not announced in advance. The way I always find out about them and keep up with Disney Studio Store pins is I follow them on Facebook and I have my notifications turned on for the page so I know whenever they post. They just recently did a surprise online release of film strip pins. And so this is the one way for out-of-towners to buy Studio Store pins direct from the Studio Store at cost. However, their shipping costs, even if you're just getting one pin, are $12. And they ship through UPS Ground with signature confirmation. It's really kind of a bummer because that is like the most expensive shipping you'll find anywhere for anything. But that does allow you personally to purchase DSSH pins direct from the store without having to go to the store. And then there are Walt Disney Imagineer pins and these are cast member exclusive pins. WDI typically does their in-store release of pins on Mondays and that's at Mickey's of Glendale out in California. Again, a cast member exclusive store. But on the following Wednesday, those pins go online on the hub, which is accessible to any cast members anywhere. But to access the hub, you have to either be on a company computer or I believe I've heard cast members say they can be on their phone but connected to the company Wi-Fi. And so the cast members who are not out in California 
can purchase those pins online. However, they can only purchase the pins that did not sell out during their in-store release. So for any Walt Disney World cast members who have been wanting the heroin pins, I'm sorry. And if you're just a regular Joe Schmo person wanting to buy WDI pins online, then your only option is a secondary market. So this was definitely quite a lot and probably a little bit rambly too, but there's just so many different components and nuances to buying pins online. And the big part is working to educate yourself and also trying to leave that level of paranoia where anything and everything is fake. In the comments, I'd be happy to help answer any other general questions you may have about buying online Online, but if you're looking for feedback or guidelines on specific sellers, you can go onto one of the Facebook reference groups and ask there. So hopefully this video has at least been helpful in kind of outlining all the avenues through which you can find Disney pins online, as well as some guidelines to help ensure that you have a safe buying experience. But thanks for watching!